Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I want to go over how to create a personal financial budget in four simple steps. I know that when you hear the word budget, it scares you. For most, they think about budget and they're like, huh, the money I made. And now when I work towards a budget or I'm working on a budget, then it's really paying bills. Budget, the word budget, when it comes to mind, it's often thought about paying bills. So what if I were to tell you that if you were to look at the word budget differently or show you how to look at the word budget differently and how it can help you plan for a better future, a better financial future for you and your family, as well as your loved ones. After all, money is the gasoline of life. If you're planning to take a vacation, would you just jump in the car and drive to your destination? Or would you rather jump in the car, turn on your GPS, enter the destination, and then get different options or different routes that you can take to get to your destination? Which one would make more sense? I would say the latter. The GPS will help you track the different traffic conditions and potentially help you get to your destination sooner than later. The budget does the same thing, but for your money. And it seems that everyone in the world, for the most part, is very concerned about money, about making ends meet. And so if you are in a similar mindset, then why wouldn't you? create a personal budget. I know I would. With that being said, I have not always used a budget, but once I started using a budget for my own personal finances, it helped me get a clear picture of how my finances look and helped me plan for the best. And most importantly, plan for the worst. Everyone can sit and plan for the best, but you got to be fair. You got to plan for the best, plan for consistency with, with no change, and ultimately plan for the worst. And if you plan for the worst and something happens, well, guess what? No surprises, right? So you mitigate surprises and uncertainty through planning. So what exactly is a budget? Well, a budget is pretty much income available to offset expenditures for a period of time. In this case, let's talk about budgets in the, on a monthly basis. Part one, it's essential for you to understand what assets and liabilities are. Asset is any kind of property that has some sort of value where you can liquidate or doesn't need to be liquidated that can pay your debt. For example, cash, cash equivalents, CDs, money market, a car paid off, or if there's equity in the vehicle, then that's that partial asset. Your home, if there's equity, rental properties, any electronics, goods, personal items that you can sell, liquidate for cash money. Those are assets, personal assets. Liabilities. This is the debt you owe. Mortgage, car payment, insurance, car insurance, health insurance, student loans, credit card payments. You get the idea. Those are liabilities. There's short-term liabilities and then there's long-term liabilities. And a liability in itself could have both components to it. When you combine your assets and your liabilities together, this is going to equal your net worth. Essentially, this is your personal balance sheet. Asset plus liabilities equal net worth or lack of net worth. The goal of this video is to gear you if you don't have any net worth and you're in debt to get you above ground and even higher. 
if you're at zero not so shabby at least you don't owe anything and then we can work from there to get you to the next level and if you're a positive net worth then we can use a budget to grow your net worth and even if you're already using some sort of budget it doesn't hurt to learn more how to become more efficient at using a budget Part two, income. For most, this would pretty much be your paycheck because most people are employees and that would be your main source of income or maybe the only source of income. Other sources of income can be interest from a savings account, dividends from stock, business income, rental income, and other various investment income so any inflow of cash that would be your income part three expenses the number one expense for most american is going to be a mortgage or rent from there it's probably going to be car payment insurance policies credit card payments student loans list goes on so those are pretty much considered fixed expenses. They're going to run for a while and every month payments are going to be pretty consistent. Then you have your variable expenses, which fluctuate based on your discretion, such as food, how much food you want to consume, what sort of food you want to consume. So that budget or that expense per month can fluctuate, but you have a choice. Gas. There's a fixed element to it and then there's a variable element to it. So for example, if you commute to work, the gas needed for commuting to work, that would be fixed for the most part. And then if you choose to travel over the weekend on mini vacation, then that could be variable because you can choose not to go and that excess fuel cost would not be incurred. So that would be expense overall. That's the gist of it. Part four. Income and expenses net together is going to equal your net income or deficit. This essentially is your personal income statement, P&L, profit and loss for the month. And if you were to forward this for the whole year, then you have an annual P&L income statement. Why is this important? It is important because you need to know how much inflow you have versus how much outflow you have each month to see if you are accumulating cash or if you're breaking even or if you're actually operating at the deficit. So from there, you can plan what the next steps are, such as if you are green, meaning you have positive cash flow every month, you can plan for your rainy day fund if you don't have enough in that fund then you can plan to fill that fund up and once you have that reserve fund at the appropriate level then you can either plan for fun with a d so well take off the d so fun fun so at first you plan for the emergency fund with a d and then once you accomplish the fund then you take off the d and you have fun right I know it's dry humor, but anyways, so you can use that budget to understand where you are with your emergency fund, the reserves, and at which, at that point, then you can look at investments. You can look at living, whatever you choose to do, but at least you have a bearing of where you are today and where you're going tomorrow with your finances and not only with your finances, but once you have your finances in order, then you can go out the realm of just looking at your money. So if, you, if you're cash flow positive, then that's great. If you are neutral, not negative, not positive, and you just breaking even, well, is that good or is that bad? It depends. It's not bad. You can be worse off being in a deficit, right? But again, this is where part one comes into play. If you have assets and they're generating 
income or you have assets that are generating enough income to offset your expenses where you are neutral, but your assets are, let's say a couple hundred thousand, couple million dollars where all of your expenses are paid off. And that principal is taking care of all your expenses every month. Then that's not so shabby, right? You're free. You're literally free. Your money is working for you and you do not have to work and your expenses are being paid every month. So how does a budget come in this situation? How does it help a person in this situation? You can use this to forecast all the way out, such as seeing how much you will need if inflation continues to rise and if your return on your assets is X amount versus inflation Y amounts, at what point in time should you be concerned? Or when should you pump the brakes and possibly go through your expense item and minimize certain variable costs or even potentially wiping out fixed costs in six months, 12 months, two years, five years. You have that ability once you create a budget. You have the roadmap to your finances. If your inflow and outflow net together and you're negative, then a budget is mandatory for you because you need to know what's what, how much is coming in and where it is going out. You need to be able to identify where the money is going out, where the sources, what are the sources that are draining all of your money every month. And then from there, you can either increase your work hours, get a second job, look at other opportunities, potentially furthering your education, certification license, school, so that you can amplify your value so then you can get what more money that's why a budget is crucial you need to be able to identify your expense item what your cost drivers are relative to your inflow and from there make decisions it's easy to gauge things and it's a lot more challenging to go into the nitty gritty and understand exactly what is happening with a situation. And in this case is your money, your finances. So ultimately, what does this do for you? It ultimately would help you achieve freedom. If you have a proper budget, you know, if you make X amount of dollars and you spend Y amount of dollars, then by knowing how much you spend each month, average across the years, you would know how much you need to potentially quit your job. But this topic is going to be in another video. How much do I need to save so that I can live off of the principle of my money and pretty much live my life? I don't want to use the word retirement because retirement is when you put something out of service. And if you get to that point where you put yourself out of service, I think you've been going a little bit too long and we definitely should have talked sooner. To sum it up, four essential parts. Understanding your asset and liabilities, where you're at when you net that together. Your income, and your expenses when you net that together and then ultimately the whole picture from your assets and liabilities which is your balance sheet and then your income and expenses which is your income statement and you look at those and essentially for a bonus you will work on your cash flow so certain things would drain your cash and other things would not impact your cash and having cash on hand could be critical uh, in certain situations for example your emergency fund would be part of that cash balance that you want to have on hand you want to have access to cash there's a lot of ways you can use a budget and i feel that is essential to anyone that is trying to build their wealth accumulate their wealth or protect their wealth that is just essential it's the roadmap of money it's the roadmap to your money and not having one is just driving blind. And pretty much, if you can get this personal budget in check, then it's the same fundamentals for business budgeting. And that takes that can potentially take you to the next level. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the material. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Until next time, stay safe and work on a budget. <laughs> Thank you.